All right. First and foremost, we gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakapus Das. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, which starts with the 144,000. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come out week in, week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked and sinful kingdom. We are here to tell our people, you so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, you so-called Native Americans, that you are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You are God's chosen people, right? According to biblical prophecy. We are here to tell you your true nationality according to the Bible, what God expects from you from the Bible, and what's gonna happen on the earth according to the Bible. But we're gonna kick it off with this. All right. This is Matthew 3 and 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the kingdom of heaven? That's a good question. The kingdom of heaven is a place known as paradise, where the righteous will rule the planet earth under our Lord and Savior, under our King, where the laws, the statutes, and the commandments will be implemented. The world will have to rehearse the laws of God. That is what the kingdom of heaven is. Where the Israelites will be rulers of the planet earth. God will have a new order. Not like your bogus elites new world order. There will be a righteous world order. Under God, the Heavenly Father, which his real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, and under his son, who the world ignorantly called the Messiah, which his Hebrew name is Yahweh Shah. Read that again. This is Matthew 3 and 1. No, 3, Matthew 3 and 2. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does repentance mean? So, Let's get Isaiah 55. All right. so, this is Isaiah 55. Like two or three. All right. Isaiah 55. question was, what is repentance? You want to know what repentance is? We're going to tell you what repentance is according to the Bible. Okay. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. How do you seek the Lord while he may be found? The time is now to find the Lord. The time before great judgments, the time of trouble, the time of darkness, the time of death, the time of mourning. We are coming into those times. So the Lord says, seek him while he may be found. Right now is the time to find the Lord. 
And how do you know it's time to find the Lord? Because the prophets are still out here prophesying. Or oh, a little more of that. The prophets are out here prophesying. That's how you know it's time to seek the Lord. Because there's going to come a time period when the prophets are not going to be out here because it's too dangerous to be out here. Read it again. All right. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Call ye upon him while he is near. He is near right now. Because we are the mouthpieces of the Lord. We are tools to the Heavenly Father. We are His messengers. We are set up to tell you what God expects of you, what God wants you to do before He brings His ultimate judgment. That is our purpose, that is our job. Tell you what God expects from you before He judges you. Right? Call ye upon Him. So that means you got to know the names. You have to know the name of the Father and the Son to call upon them. Because contrary to popular belief, the Heavenly Father name isn't God, and His Son isn't His Son name isn't Jesus Christ. You have to know their names. Go ahead. Right. Let the wicked, let the wicked forsake his way. At, as the question was posed, what is repentance? Well, this is repentance right here. Okay. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our power for he will abundantly pardon. So the Lord is giving you a heads up. The Lord is giving you a chance. Right? You are receiving your second chances. Your third chances. Right? Forsake your wicked ways. Give up the immoral life. Stop doing wickedness. And what does that mean? Transgressing the lords of the Heavenly Father. Stop transgressing the Lord. Stop breaking God's rules. That's what God is telling us. That's what repentance is. Stop disobeying God's word. The Lord is warning you. He's giving you a, a time to get right. Okay. Okay. Um, this is First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So what is sin? What is evil? The breaking of the law. When you look up the word transgress, it means to break. Right? So you're breaking God's laws. So that means you are a sinner. But the Lord said, forsake that. Give up the life of immorality. Give up the life of doing wickedness and evil. Stop sinning. Right? Go ahead. All right. It's Isaiah 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. You can read 7 again. All right, cut. Isaiah 55 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Uh -huh. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our power. But well, he will abundantly pardon. So he said, forsake your wicked thoughts. Forsake your wicked deeds. Stop living sinful lives. And turn back to the Lord. Why you still have a chance? Why you still have time? Because time is running out. And we are the final, we are one of the final signs that your time is running out. When you see God's messages on the street, just know these are the final moments before great evils come. This is your last chance. This, 
These are your last warnings before the books are closed and your fates are sealed. So it says that he will abundantly pardon you. What means he'll forgive you, right? He'll forgive you if you turn from living evil lives and live to how he taught us to live, a righteous life, right? Yeah, Exodus 20 and 1. And these are the basics of what God commanded us to do. This is the basics. Thou shalt not steal. Is that hard? Thou shalt not murder. Is that hard? Is that hard to do? Nope. Not to steal and murder from each other? Is that hard? Go ahead. This is Exodus 20 and 1. And the Most High spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the Lord commanded that we have no other gods but the heavenly fall. This is what you should be learning. This is the education that you should be getting. Not to worship any other god but the creator of the heavens and earth. Go ahead. Yeah. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above yeah, yeah. yeah thou shalt not make any images of anything that's in the heavens above alright you shouldn't do anything in regards to making images of the creator which you did in your Roman Catholic churches You have something called the 16th chapter. And in the 16th chapter, right? In the 16th chapter, you have naked angels all over the ceiling. Adam is naked. The angels is naked. And God strictly commanded that you don't make images of anything in the heavens above or the earth beneath. So why in your Roman Catholic churches you have images of angels and the prophets and our forefathers all naked? Why is that in your churches? When this commandment says what it says, read it again. There's Exodus 20 and 1. And the Most High spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy power, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Okay. All right. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. You shall not bow down yourself to them. You should not bow down to any other gods. You shouldn't bow down to any idols. You shouldn't bow down to no pagans. You shouldn't bow down to anything because there's only one God. Uh, Nor serve them nor serve them. You shouldn't keep any practices or the customs of any other God. Go ahead. For I, the Lord, thy power am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the Lord visited those that hate him. So now you have to ask yourself a question. Do you love God? Or do you hate God? You gotta ask yourself this question. Do you believe in God? 
or you don't believe in God. And you show that you believe in God by your actions, the way you live. And you show that you don't believe in God by your actions and the way you live. You know who are the godly ones and you know who are the ungodly ones by how they live. Right? So he visited the iniquity of them that hate him. Yeah. And it said unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Which is reincarnation. For he that have an ear, let him hear. The Lord visits you every third and fourth generation that you come back on the earth to pay for your sins and your past lives. Go ahead. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And he shows mercy also. He doesn't just destroy and hate. He also loves and has mercy. So the Most High is duality. Yeah. The Most High is more than one emotion. Because you know they like to say God is good, God is love, but it just said that God hates. God is angry. And he has to for a, for a complete balance, right? For a complete balance. Because if if the love was one-sided, then that, that would be an abomination. There you go. He wouldn't be a God. Yes. He wouldn't be a God if he was just one thing. He is a God because he is all things. Which means omnipotent, omnipresent. He's all powerful, all existence. Go ahead. Um, verse 7? Yep. Okay. Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. So you're not supposed to be swearing to God. Right? Yep. You're not supposed to be using the name of the Lord like it's some type of common thing. Right? Give me this. Um, Matthew 5, get 34. Right? You're not supposed to take the Lord's name in vain. Let's see what that means to take the Lord's name in vain. All right. This is Matthew 5 and 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is the most high throne. Swear not at all, neither in heaven, because it is the most high throne. So you're not supposed to be swearing to God. You're not supposed to be swearing to your dead. You're not supposed to be putting things on your grandma, your auntie, your mother, your father, your brother, your sisters. You're not supposed to swear to God. Okay? Yeah. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is the most high strong, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. There you go. Uh -huh. So you ain't supposed to swear on yourself. Because God gave you everything that you have. He gave you life. He gave you height. He gave you strength. He gave you wisdom. He gave you skills. He gave you talents. He gave you a, a creation. So you can't swear on anything. Because we didn't, we didn't create it. <laughs> there you go. Makes sense. There you go. We'll go back to Exodus. So do not take the Lord's God name in vain.
Exodus 20 and um, 7 again. Yep. Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. The Lord will not hold you guiltless that take of his name in vain. You can't put nothing on God's name. You can't swear to God. Oh, I can swear to God all I want because I know Jesus died for my sins. Good, good congratulations. That's good for you. We are proud for you that Jesus died for your sins, whoever that is. Because we don't know no one named Jesus. Yeah. All right. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. These are some simple instructions that the Lord God gave us for our benefit. So we don't kill ourselves. So we don't get cra go crazy, right? But the reason you go crazy, because you go astray from what God told you to do and told you not to do. That's why you go crazy. That's why you have mental problems. You stray away from God's words. There you go. Did you put up your Christmas tree? You stray away from God's word. They just finished celebrating Sam Hain. Halloween. Right? And Thanksgiving didn't even come up yet. Thanks yeah, yeah, yeah. killing didn't even come up yet. Lights already up. And y'all already prepping for the paganism known as Santanelia. Or the winter solstice. Also known as witch's season. The coldest time of the year where the left hand side feel the strongest because the nights are longest and the days are shortest. Yeah. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. What is the Sabbath day? The day of rest. The day where you do absolutely nothing but praise the Creator for giving you life. And you take time to yourself. But back in our days, in our customs, we would go to the temple to offer up our sacrifices or to hear the laws from the Torah. We would go to our synagogues and we go to our chief houses where the priests were at so we can learn the Lord's statutes and commandments. That's what we usually did on our Sabbath days. Go ahead. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power. So the Lord said you work six days and you rest on the seventh day. That is the rules that was given to us. You work six days and on the seventh day you rest. So you have to apply those laws to your life. Work for six days and you rest on the seventh day. Go ahead. Right. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid, thy maid servant, man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within yeah. That is within thy gates. So the Sabbath wasn't only for you. The Sabbath was for everybody. Right? Even your kids. Even if you had servants. Even if you had maids and matrons, uh, uh, waitresses, butlers. You would give them that day off. Why? So they can worship the Lord. So they can rest. So they can learn the Torah, learn the Lord's statutes and commandments. That's what we took our Sabbath day for. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
born us, all right? For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Lord created the earth in six days, which we know the Lord's time and man's time is two different time frames. Because the most high is outside of time, which is even hard to comprehend. So the Lord's time and our time is two different times. So a day to mankind, I mean a day to the Lord, is a thousand years to mankind. And a thousand years to mankind is a day to the Lord. So the Lord created the heavens and earth in 6,000 years. And on the seventh thousand years, he rested from creation. So the Lord gave us six days to work, and on the seventh day, we're supposed to rest. Okay. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. So the Lord told us to honor our father and our mother. Even that is missing in today's culture and American society, the honoring of your father and mother. The people of today hardly honor their parents or honor their elders. That is missing in today's society. But the Bible teaches us to honor our elders, to honor your parents. Yeah, read that again. Honor thy father. Take the sleep over. Not again. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. So the Lord told us to honor your father and your mother. A missing art in today's society. Like I said, there is no honoring of your elders. There is no honoring of your parents. A lot of your parents you haven't spoken to your parents in years, in months. There's no honoring of your parents. Right? So it says that your days may be long upon the earth. Because you get wisdom from your parents. Your parents lived on this earth longer than you had. So they know a thing or two. They can teach you a thing or two. So when you honor your parents, you learn from your parents, you are better able to navigate in life from what they experience and what they learn and from what you experience and what you learn. That's what you get from honoring your parents, honoring your elders. God. Thou shalt not kill Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not murder. The word there is murder. And murder is premeditated. The Lord told us not to murder people. Not to premeditate murdering your neighbor. And just imagine if everybody kept the law, thou shalt not murder. How many more lives would be on the planet if we just kept that one law, thou shalt not kill? How many more lives would be on the planet Earth if everybody kept, thou shalt not kill? Right? Okay. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What is adultery? You are sleeping with another person's wife. 
You are fornicating with somebody that's in a relationship already. That is adultery. Imagine how better the world would be if people did not commit adultery. Once again, these simple rules, simple laws that God gave us so we can have better lives. But people don't want to have better lives. They want to live life the way they want to live life. They want to live life according to their lust and their desires. You don't want to live life the way God told us to live life. You want to live life however you want to live life. And then you're wondering why your life is so messed up and chaotic and you suffer from anxiety and depression and you're suicidal and you're plagued with mental and emotional demons and then you wonder why. Because you turned away from God's words. You went astray from what God told us how to live. And then you wonder why you suffer from anxiety and depression. And you borderline suicidal. But God, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Look at this, this girl, man. Yeah. Don't take something that doesn't belong to you. Something so simple, right? Why can't that law be kept? Thou shalt not steal. If you don't have it, that means you don't deserve to have it. You know, I hate to say it that way. It ain't well, you, know. you to have it. If it ain't yours. Yeah, you it ain't yours. it. Or whatever. You, whatever it is, it ain't your shit. It ain't your shit. Yeah. Right? Thou shalt not steal. God commanded us not to steal. What's so hard about that? Why can't you control not stealing? You have to be a thief. Why? Why do you have to take something that doesn't belong to you? Once again, these simple rules God gave us to live by, but you people find it so hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Don't lie. Be honest. Yeah. Be truthful. The Lord said, do not bear false witness. Uh -huh. Don't be lying on people. What is so hard about that? Why do you have to lie? These simple rules, don't lie, don't murder, don't steal. Work six days and rest. God gave us these rules so our lives could be better. But once again, you don't want better lives. You want life according to your lust. You want life according to your desires. You want life on your terms versus the terms God gave us to live by. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Look up covet, please. The word covet. Because before you steal something, before you murder, before you commit adultery, you do the act of coveting. And once again, coveting is premeditated. Right. It could be um, it could be lust, yearn to possess or have something. All right, let me get another lust or yearning to have something that does not belong to you. Yep. To desire what belongs to another, inordinate, inordinately or... All right, that's it. So you desire something that does not belong to you. That's why the Lord said, thou shalt not covet. 
don't desire things that other people had. Then you wouldn't want to steal from them or murder them or commit adultery. Inordinately or culpably. Inordinately, affection. You can't control yourself. Have some goddamn self-control. Yeah. Have some discipline. You can't have things that don't belong to you. So the Lord told us, don't cover people's things. Yeah. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. So the Lord told us not to have inordinate affection towards your neighbor's land, your neighbor's belongings, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's property. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. What's so hard about that? Why is that so hard not to covet somebody else's belongings? That was it on that? Go to Matthew 19 and 16. Because that the things that the Heavenly Father taught us is the same things that the Messiah taught us. The messenger, right? the prophet that the Lord sent us to watch out and to look out for. Right? This is Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So, a rich person asked the Messiah, what can he do to, inter to inherit eternal life? Let's see what the Messiah says. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. There is nobody good on earth but the heavenly Father. Okay. That is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. We just read ten commandments that the Lord gave us to keep. There's over 600 more commandments that the Lord told us to keep, yeah. right? So the Lord said, if you want to enter into life, keep his commandments. Go ahead. He said unto him, which Yahweh Shai said, thou shalt, know, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't murder each other. If you want to enter into life, do not commit the act of murder. What's so hard about that? Why is that such a hard thing not to murder each other? Don't kill another human being. Why is that so hard? But that's the evil that's inside of you that desires to murder each other. That's the darkness that's inside of you to murder each other, man. That's you being detached from the way God told us to live. A simple, don't murder each other. Don't kill each other. Why is that so hard? Why is that such a complex thing not to blow each other up or shoot each other or stab each other? Go ahead. Yeah. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Do not commit adultery. So not only the Lord asks us not to murder each other, don't commit adultery. Don't sleep with a woman that belongs to another man. Why is that so hard? If this woman belongs to a man, do not try to sleep with her. Don't have sex with a married woman. Why is that so complicated? Get your own woman. What's so hard about that? Let's get to the Right? So 
Okay. Alright, cut. Beat the point again. Alright. Start from the top. 16. Start from 19. 16. Yeah. Alright. This is Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Does that sound like hate? Does that sound like hate? Does that sound like hate? No, I'm sorry. For Did me. I hear? It sound like nothing. Did I hear hate? It sounds like Hold on. Oh, okay, read that again. I'll read it again. Um, this is um, 16. Yeah, kind. Ma Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good thing should I do that I might get eternal life? Does that sound like hate? No. I know. I know, I know reading comprehension is a thing, man. Of course it does. You know? I, I, I know everybody wants to live, right? What does the rest of it say? Everybody wants to live? Does anybody want to die? No. Oh, okay. I thought so. Let's continue. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is the most high. So the Lord said, There's nobody good on earth because there's nobody perfect. Right? We there's a lot of good people on this earth. There's nobody good on earth I but, said, but the Heavenly Father. <laughs> the Heavenly Father is the good person. The Heavenly Father is not on this earth, He's up in the fucking sky. And that's why he's good. He's a hypothetical man who doesn't exist. No, let's keep it going. All right. He don't control nothing. All right, cut. Yeah. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. If you want life. Which commandments? If you want to live. Which ones? Are we picking and choosing? If you want to all live. Or none of them? If you want to live. Or not so. If you want more life. If you want to live. If you want to live longer, if you want a couple of extra days on your life, let's see what we got to do. He said unto him, which, how shall I say, thou shalt do no murder. Don't murder each other. That sound like hate. No, I, I didn't hear no hate not to murder each other. That's I, a good rule. I guess that's hate to somebody. Somebody, somebody loves murdering, obviously. Yeah, we know what race that is. That likes blowing none people us, up. None of us should murder others. Right? Oh. Uh, obviously, that got to be hate. Blowing people up. Blowing people up. But, you know, let's continue. Let's see All what right. else we should do to live longer. Go ahead. All right. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't sleep with a woman that is married. Which of you is innocent of this sin? I bet not one of you. <laughs> so if a woman is in a relationship, don't uh, sleep with her. If a woman is not in a relationship, don't s have sex with married, a woman right? that's in a relationship. Oh, uh, really? Really? What, what does this mean? Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal from each other. If it doesn't belong to you, don't take it. Is, is that me? No, that's not right. Oh, okay. But, you know. Oh, 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 watch this one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta build on that. Don't okay. steal. Because what people stole this land? I wonder that's if that was. That's a fucking fact. I wonder if that was. That's a fucking fact. White people stole this land and brought black people here from other people who were already here. So I wonder if that was hate. Was that hate? So neither of us belong here. Was that hate? Absolutely it was. Okay, so let's continue. Yeah. Not only stole a land, but they stole a people. Not only people. They stole a land and a people. They yeah. stole an identity. Oh, an identity. More than one. Entire oh. fucking nationalities of identity. So, so you yes, sir. Together into one. Is that why the bro is a black man? Is it what? Is a black man? What about the prize, the prize. Is the black man? Yeah. Is the black man the prize? Yeah, is the black man or is it not a black or is a white guy? The, the people yeah. the You said Christ? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Is it black or is it white? Yes, Jesus Christ. Is black. Is black. Okay. <laughs> Superman. 
Simple Honestly, man. Honestly, he ain't fucking neither. <laughs> so let's continue. Let's, right. let's continue. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Watch this one. Thou, thou shalt not bear false witness. Do not lie. <laughs> Don't lie to each other. Who will lie in this society? Does not lie. So once again. I know you guys do every fucking day you stand here. So once again. It shows the deeds of the devil. Yeah. It shows the deeds of Satan. I'm alive. Because You're alive. the people that's doing adverse to this falls into that category of Shatan, the deceiver. Right? So he said, don't murder, don't steal, don't commit adultery, and don't lie. This is how you live a little bit longer on earth. Okay? Yeah. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your father and your mother. Have respect for your parents, which is a missing art in this society. There's no respect for elders or the elderly, right? This is American way. Oh, you can't even discipline your children in this kingdom. Oh, they give the children the rights over you. Over you. Yeah. Let's continue. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The Lord asked us to love your neighbor as yourself. Show respect to your people. Treat the people around you the way you want respect. That's what the Lord asked us to do. How do you guys want to be treated? The Lord asked us. You guys want to be treated with respect? Watch. Would you like that? You give respect right? the way you want respect. You give love the way you want love. This is what God asks of us. But what do our people do? The complete opposite. The way, the way that America lives is the complete opposite. That's the real fucking thing, though. Continue. Treat your neighbor the young, as right. you will treat the your young man. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. So the kid was saying, I did all these things, right? I'm a good guy. Continue. What lack I yet? What do you lack? I'm not killing nobody. I'm not stealing from nobody. I'm not having sex with another man's woman. I'm not doing none of those things, Lord. What do I lack that makes me a good person? Continue. Yahweh Shai said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. The Messiah knew that this man had great wealth, and that he cared more for his wealth than he cared about believing is serving the Lord. So the Messiah tested him by saying, sell your wealth and see if you truly believe. And let's see, what, let's see how he responded. But when the young man heard that saying, but when the, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So he went away sorrowful because he owned a lot of things in this world. He was attached to he a had, lot of things. He had assets. Oh, what you call now? And that's why he couldn't sacrifice. That's why he couldn't give it up. Because he was attached to things of uh, this tangible world. Continue. Oh, uh, don't mind. I was going to ask a question. Go ahead, Ryan. This is uh, Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 8. Perfect. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Mm -hmm. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Does that sound like hate? That don't sound like hate to me. So the oh, Lord said, if you want to... So the Lord said, if you want a prosperous and successful life, meditate on his words day and night. Outside of people and their feelings, 
the Bible stands the test of time. Kingdoms rise, kingdoms fall, people live, people die, and the words of the Lord are still here. Despite people's strong feelings. Despite people's strong opinions. So I'm going to bank and invest on a thing that's staying the test of time versus people's feelings and straight opinions. Up, straight up question. Yes, sir. Are you rooting for or fucking or against people against people? No, I'm not rooting for that. Do you want the world where we have one race over another? According to the Bible. Do you want that? According to the Bible. Do you personally want According that? According to the Bible. Take it with the Bible or not. Do you want that? We word? live by what's in the book. You understand? Do you want that word? Do you understand? What's in the book? Do you understand? What's in the book? Do you hear what we're saying? Tell me what's in the book. We live by what's in the book. Does the book say one race over another? Yes, sir. It does. Yes, sir. You want that? Yes, sir. It sounds fucked up to me. Why? We won with the Lord. I think we learned from sorry. history that it's fucked up to have one race over another. And I don't think we need that again. That's true. So you need to tell every government official, every leader, every owner that is fucked up that there's one superior race over the rest of the race. I think there is no one superior race. I think fact tells us there is no fucking one superior race. I think we're all equal. No, the Lord doesn't deal with him. The Lord doesn't, the Lord deal, doesn't deal with him. Oh, the Lord loves fucking everybody. No, he doesn't. Oh, who does the Lord love? Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's. Does the Lord love the Israelites, his chosen people? Do you believe in... Who are the Israelites? Can I ask you a question, sir? Are the Israelites Jewish people? Or are they black people? Can I ask you a question? Are they white people? Or are they uh, Semitic people? Do you believe in God? Sure. Let's say for the sake of the conversation. It's a simple yay or yes or no? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Okay. Do you... You follow what God says. I do. I follow the commandments, and I follow the yeah. So you follow what Which God one? says. Which the, one? The Bible. Are you talking about the Old Testament or the New Testament? Entirely, entire in its in whole entirety. I follow the Old you, Testament, God. You follow the Old Testament. Yeah, the one who says kill your enemies. That's the one I follow. Right? <laughs> He's good. He's good. Yes. This is uh. Uh, Malachi chapter 3 uh, and verse 6 for I am the Lord Yahweh I change not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed so the heavenly father doesn't change the old testament God the new testament God no, does not change. it's all the same God Remember the whole thing about the whole story about Jesus was hey I bring I come here not to break the old testament but to bring a new one. Right? That's right. Yeah. That's that whole deal. So all those people, all those Christians, they're kinda they're kind of involved. Okay. So what's your gripe? My gripe is this fucking thing. My gripe is one race over another. That's God what never said God never said one over one for another. Deuteronomy seven to six. See, there's a lot of misconceptions that's in the Bible. Yeah. People really don't know what's in the Bible. Give me a thesis. Well, I read the whole fucking 16. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, this is uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord, God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people yeah. unto himself. Yeah. So the Lord told one people. Now here we're talking about the Jews. The Lord is talking the to Lord's one. The Lord is talking about the Jews and how he chose them, his people. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. He's listening. Continue. Are we talking about regular Jews or Ethiopian Jews? There's only one just, Jew. I just want to be clear on who's the chosen people. There's only like, one Jew. All the Jews. There's only right. one so Jew. So it's, it's white Jews and black Jews. There's, there's no color. Right. No color. There I is no color. I respect that. There's I only one Jew. It's all, it's all Jews. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, continue. Yeah, it says, it says, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So see, the Lord, he already, he already chose a certain people on the planet earth to be yeah. above all nations. See, he 
shows his people. Yeah. Right. So he, that he, right he there. He all those other ones out already. Right. So yeah. that shows you that the Lord, he's a favoritism. He has he has a favorite people on the earth. Yeah. So so in a way, if you wanna if you wanna say that the Lord is racist, yeah, the Lord is racist. So how about today though? Huh? It still stands. It still stands. Like I, I read in uh, Malachi the third chapter, the Lord, the Lord, not, the Lord the does Lord, not change. The Lord's not out there killing white people. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the Lord, life and death belongs into the hands of the right. Lord. The, the, the heavenly fall that has control, the, the heavenly fall that has control over life, the heavenly fall that has control over death. So you cannot say that the Lord is not killing these people. He kills everybody. He kills everybody equally. We all die. It says, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. So the Lord didn't choose us because we was the fewest of people. He didn't choose the Jews, which they wasn't called Jews. That's a derogatory term. It was called Israelites. It was 12 tribes. It's cool. It's cool. It was 12 tribes, right? He chose them because of the promises he made with Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the lost one was the one that ended up in Europe. There's 12 tribes, right? Was it 12 or was it 13? It was only 12. Only 12. The tribe of Levi wasn't considered the tribe because they was the priests. Oh, I got you. I understand? I understand, yeah. That was it? Yeah. This is um, Ephesians 5 and 17, 17 or 16? 17. Ephesians 5 and 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Oh, this one's just for me. This is for everybody. Nobody's exempt. Yeah. This is why we out here teaching. That's why we speaking aloud so everybody can hear. So when judgment comes, you can't say that you didn't know you what all, God you wanted. You all know that I'm speaking now. You all know that this stuff that you're talking about is racial supremacy. All know that. You, you just know said that. you believe in God. I said you know the racial You just said you believe in God. Yeah. Correct? Exactly. You just said you follow yeah. God's word. Correct? Yeah. yeah. And, and I do not agree, agree on what you say God's word is. There you that go. one race is superior to another. <laughs> you I don't, do not agree with that. You don't agree what God says. We're not saying anything. Your interpretation is flawed. Read 7 and 7 again. I read, it. I, I read it again. Read 7 and 6. Verse 6. Come on. Wow. Hold on, hold on. Read 5 and 17 again. All right. Then read that. This is Ephesians 5 and 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do not be unwise. Understand not what your will or the will of the Lord is. Are you guys here so, often? Are we interpreting anything? Or are we reading verbatim what the words of the Lord says? Are you guys said? post up here often? Read 76, please. This is uh, Deuteronomy if I, if I come, chapter if I 7, there, verse 6. If I come with For thou art a holy people God. unto the right. Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people are you guys unto yourself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So you could come prepared. You could you can Will you be here next Thursday? We are here every Tuesday and Thursday, God's will. Tuesday. I'll see you Tuesday, brother. So now And I mean that when I say that. You are my brother. You are my brother. You are my brother. You are my brother. I have a you question. You are my brother. You are my brother. All of you are your brothers and ancestors. That's good to we know. We are all fucking, we are all fucking siblings. That's good we to know. We are all the children of the same fucking you, father. The irony of what you're saying, you are absolutely correct. You are our brother. You are our brother There's Esau. There's no irony there. It is irony because you are our brother Esau and we are your yeah, brother Jacob. That's fucking racism. That's that is racial supremacy. Some fucking bullshit. So now I have a question. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was one not the other obvious bad guy? So, let's get wrong. Hold on. So, 
Yeah, yeah Rome is not included. Yeah. Was oh, not one. Not. Does does one sin in the past condemn one entire race to villainy for all fucking history? So once again, we had no fork in the battle. This wasn't our choice. Nothing was ever any of our choice. There it's you all go. fucking history. There you go. So we're not teaching hate. We're not teaching. We are you are doing, teaching hate because you are teaching the supremacy of one race over another. We are te telling you what God says. That we has, all know what you're fucking teaching. What you feel Anyone who listens to you long enough knows exactly what you are fucking saying. So once again, what we feel doesn't matter to what God What we feel doesn't matter at all, right? What you feel doesn't matter at all. Compared to God what God, God. There you go. Let's get what God says. This is uh, Romans chapter 9 verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So the children wasn't even on earth yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Continue. That the purpose of the Most High, according to the elect according to election, might stand. According to election. Who he chose. Election. Right? What does election mean? Choice. What does election mean? Thank you. Choose. That's exactly what it means. Who chooses? Let's listen. Who chooses? Go ahead, huh? Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Save the Lord. My man's got some gold rope on his foot. So the Lord's thoughts are not mankind's thoughts. So mankind can have a whole bunch of feelings and have a whole bunch of opinions and have a whole bunch of thoughts. Uh -huh. But it does not deter what the most high made yeah. it and the change and the purposes about what and the purposes because we are all equally intelligent beings and the purposes the of the most high on this fucking planet we're all yeah. the same it's we're it's all brothers we're all the same it says this is Romans that's it that's a nine verse eleven it says for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of the most high according to election my stand, yeah, not is. of works, you guys put the but of him that call it. I'll see you guys next time. It was <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, right? We, you guys we are not, we're not a violent people. We just preach the word. So I'm not a violent person either. either. So, right? so, so the Except question, for the fact that we're both we're both followers of the Old Testament God, right? So we 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 got to talk once about again ultimately because if I, there is an enemy of our people, there's only one way to go, right? I hear right? everything that you're is saying. That, is that where we're going with this? But you're not listening to what God has to say. Are I, you a follower of the of that same Old Testament God? I hear a lot of your feelings. Who is, who is your enemy? But I don't hear who is your enemy? The truth of the matter. Who is your enemy? Let's continue. Who is, is your enemy? Is it, is it me personally? The elder is it shall personally? serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Who is that talking about? Before they was even born, it was predestinated that one man will have a purpose and another man will have a purpose. God creates men to have purpose. So let's see the purposes of these two gentlemen. Continue. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Did I say that? Did I interpret anything? Did I put that in the text? Uh, Am I preaching supremacy? Chose which words to say. Let's read it again. And also, our, let's follow our it through. dear brother let's Esau. Let's follow it through to the conclusion. Our dear that brother we Isaiah. Always Joshua, fucking do. That we the always message. fucking do. Let Isaiah hear the God message again. You. Yeah, we all know what as you it is written, we all know what you preach. Jacob have I you loved, me. but Esau have I hated. You know I shot you what? Did you hear that? What shall we say then? One more time. One more time. Verse 13. Yes, sir. As it is written. As it is written. Written where? In the Old Testament. The same Old Testament God this man loves. Right? The God that kills. Right? This is the same Old Testament God. What did he say, brother? Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. Did I say that or did God say that? Which was Jacob and which was Esau? Jacob is our people. Esau is 
Which maybe people, which people is which? Maybe, possibly, your people. Which people is which? This is Jacob right here. He saw we we and know to be uh, hairy, right? This is Jacob right here. We, we know he saws hairy, right? It's the only thing we know about. This oh, is Jacob. Red. That guy looks pretty hairy. Red, this is Jacob. That guy looks like an Esau. For the viewers. Look at all that hair on his head. Type in, type in the 12 look tribe chart. Look at that hair on his chin. The Esau is the progenitor of the Caucasian race. What is the definition of Esau? What Let's is continue. the thing that defines him in the text? Red. What, what? Yeah, like you his, is it, is it not his hairiness? No, the blood red. showing forth through his is skin. Is it not his hairiness? The lack of melanin. I, I believe that it is specifically said wait. as yeah, wait. the fact that he is look. covered in hair. Is it look. We, look, 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 look. Am I wrong? Am Esau, I wrong? Esau. Yes, Esau. It's in the fucking book. Esau, his skin. It's in the fucking Hello. description. His skin. His skin. The dermis of his skin. Covered in hair. The melanocytes. They don't secrete melanin. I don't believe it says a word about melanin. I don't think they knew. The melanocytes don't secrete melanin. I don't think they knew what melanin was back when they wrote the scripture. Right? That's why. But they sure knew what hair was. That's why when you read the story of Jacob and Esau, it said that he was red. Red. All over. Okay. All right. All, all right. over his all body. Right. So covered in red hair. No, not red hair. Covered in hair, but what color? Like the Does brother. It matter? The brother just explained. Does, does to color you. matter? He lacked pigmentation. He lacked, oh, so he was covered in white hair. That's why he was the white Lord skin covered gave in white a description hair. of why he was he some you. crazy ass fucking vampire. Let's continue. What shall no, 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 no. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's, let's, let's redefine. Exactly. Is there unrighteousness with Can we talk about what Esau was? Because he Can we talk about who Esau was? Who Esau was? Esau was? Can we talk about who Esau was? Because he created a people to hate. Is there unrighteousness with God? Let's oh, go. you guys don't want to talk about this? You, you guys don't want to fucking, you guys don't want to But he says to Moses, question. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So God Moses said that. Moses said that? He, God said, said that? he will have mercy on whom he cho God said chooses to have mercy. All right. He yeah, will have compassion. On whom yeah. he chooses to have compassion. He's the boss. He is the boss. Thank you. Yeah. You're listening. Yeah. Continue. No, oh, no, 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 no. Because we have not fucking addressed what we this guys one? are talking about. Oh, it's more. Oh, it's not over yet. I'll see. I'll see you guys the next time. The next time you guys are here. Or next time I'm here. Right. I gotta get the fuck out of here. It's been a pleasure, though. Right. I hope. I hope you got to get the I really out. genuinely hope that you guys come to another understanding of the world in which we don't have to fucking read it. It says uh, because I don't hate you. Verse 16. I don't hate you. So I hate what you talk it about. Not I hate what you preach, but I don't hate you. It. You no, are my brothers. And you always will be until we all die. It's not about what you do. It's about who God loves and who God hates. Don't get hit by cops. Yeah, yeah. Who, who knows you want to live to next Tuesday? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who knows if you're going to be here talking shit like that? Right? That's why you, you resist the devil and he flees. You don't entertain the devil. The devil doesn't control anything up here. This square that we on is Yahweh Shah. We are building on Yahweh Bashib Yahweh Shah. We don't budge off our square to entertain these mortals. We stick to the script. And if you can't get with the script, we can't get with you. It's that simple. Come on now. Let's continue. Huh. It said, For the scripture say unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout the whole, the whole the earth. So the Lord gave an example, showing you he had mercy on some, and he hardened in others. He said he raised Pharaoh up. Pharaoh was a ruler. He was an empire. He raised up an empire just so he can destroy it. This is the God that we're speaking about. Right? That his glory might be declared on the planet Earth. 
that everybody can know who's responsible for destroying the top kingdom on the planet Earth. Yeah, I. Yeah, so Sirach 33 and 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render them as like of him best. So he fashions the pot as the potter or the blacksmith fashions and wields whatever he's creating. So the Lord creates certain pots to be righteous. And the Lord created certain pots to be wicked. Just like a potter, he can make a pot that you cook food in, and he can make a pot, you can make a garbage pan or a fucking toilet. The potter does what he wills. Continue. Good is set against evil. Good. 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 <laughs> is set against evil. Is set against evil. A, B, C, one, two, three. Good is set against evil. What that man was doing was evil. Give me Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. And life yeah. against death. Life against death. We are speaking life. Right. Yo, bro, he came out of whatever dimension of hell, whatever portal yeah, of yeah. hell he came from. He was over here the other time when he was over here. He said a few words and he dipped off. I've seen him before. Yeah, whatever abyss this dude yeah. came from. Yeah. Hey, where, where's the hey? Hey, 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 hey? I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Hate is all everybody. And not, not only that, we're teaching life. You read him the scripture, bro. Jacob had my love. He saw him, I hated him. So I straight out the book. But when he came up, we were talking about eternal life. <laughs> we were talking about the commandments. So yeah. get to the hate. Get to the hate. See what Esau looks for? Get, 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 get. get to the hate. I want to hear the hate. Because that's what the devil feeds off of. Right, right. That's what he feeds off That's what he feeds off of. But we ain't got time for that. We're just identifying the hate, that's all. That's it. We're identifying it and we're calling it out and we're telling you the judgment for it. Point blank there. You want to hear what we feel. We ain't out here for what we right. feel. Right. We're here to deliver you a message. I want to hear what you think. I don't think shit. Right. I don't think I'm just a messenger. I'm here to deliver a message onto you before that judgment comes. But we don't. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. So is the godly against the sinner. And that's this ever, uh, this never ending battle, yeah. or soon to be ending battle right. between Jacob and Esau, man. Right. That's why he came up here on some hate shit, and we yeah. up here speaking life. We talking about repentance in the kingdom of heaven. We dwell of righteousness. And what did he say? We is the hate. Hey. Fucking hate demon. Yeah, Cause he ain't got no part of it. He ain't got no yeah, part got, of our kingdom. That's yeah, that's why he feels that way. You know? Where's the hate? We explained to you what's the what's the hate, man. Yeah. Lord hates Esau, man. Right. That's it. Simple as that. If the shoe fit, you wear it. You know? hey, the scriptures say hate the evil and love the good. That's it. Also. That's and it. nobody's falling for that devil trap anymore, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright? Love. Love. I said love working no ill to his neighbor. neighbor. That's right, bro. Love. We're equal. You wasn't equal when you stole our land. Exactly. We wasn't equal when you stole our people. Right. We wasn't equal when we was hanging from trees. We wasn't equal when you beat the language out of us. You beat our heritage out of us. That's the hate that you look at. But yeah. where was the love and the equality there? Yeah. And here it is, you still got the, you know, the so-called white supremacist groups still, you know, uh, alive and well. Oh, you yeah. don't see, you don't see no goddamn, uh, you know, alternate groups, so to speak, uh, against them, like the so-called Black Panthers. You don't see that no more. Thank you. But the, the damn KKK is still, you know what I'm saying? Alive and kicking. Alive and kicking. Well funded. Well funded, that's right. Government. That's right. And you, business. That's right. You got, you got damn straight up Ku Klux Klan members. Running damn corporations and businesses, oh, man. Yeah. Judges, lawyers. Judges, prosecutors, and lawyers, prosecutors, all of that, man. Scary thing, man. You see? 
and Satanists. That's right. Literal, blatant Satanists. In your schools, in your positions of power, and authority, politicians, governors, just blatant Satanists. But that's okay. But we the hate. Us just teaching the Bible, we the hate. Go ahead. Verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. Thank you. That's why we're not falling for Esau's bullshit anymore, man. Love, 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 equality. Where you don't show none of your actions don't show none of that. Yeah, I hear you say that, and that's why the scriptures told us never to trust our enemies. Right. He said his words were smoother than butter. His words were softer than oil, but war was in his heart. Yet he draw swords. The Lord told us that. So we know your MO. You sound good, but you plotting to kill me. You plotting to steal. You probably trying to kidnap me, force me back into slavery. For all I know, you seeking some type of agenda or benefit. And we are not to trust you. So no, we're not falling for, we is love and we equal. And I don't like that either. We don't trust you devils. But we digress. Go ahead, my right. God. Proverbs, okay. Proverbs 11 and 1. The false balance is abomination to the Lord when a just way is his delight. So everything that man was spewing was an abomination to the Lord, man. Aren't we all equal? There's no race superior to no there's no race superior than other races. So all your people in positions of power right. while we still in the ghettos and slum right. and poverty. Right. Are you talking that equal bullshit? Right. I don't see equality. Yeah. Nowhere. I don't see uh 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 we don't hate each other. I don't see it. Right. I hear you talking it, but I don't see it. Read it again, huh? Right. It says, Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, man. You talking about you hate supremacy, one people over another, while your people's in rulership, while your people's in power. But you don't like supremacy because you see your people going down. You see your race falling. You see your empire falling. And now you're trying to jump on a bandwagon. It's too late. You can't jump on a poverty bandwagon. Jacob is on a rise and Esau is on a fall, man. There's no stopping this prophecy train. There's a one stop. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. That's the prophecy. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. These devils get nervous, man. He know he know that what we're saying is, is the truth, you know. But but as you brother say, you know, hey, there's no stopping prophecy, man. This thing will eventually happen, man. It will eventually come to pass, man. This is uh this you might want me to do oh, something. Okay. This is um, Sirach 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So, read that again. All right. Sirach 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, unrighteous dealings, go ahead. Injuries and riches got by deceit. How did you get this land? How did you equate? all these assets and all these how the hell you build a government on somebody else's land and dictate what's right and what's wrong on somebody else's land the fuck only yeah you come in somebody's house and regulate somebody else's house this land don't belong to you continue the kingdom is translated from one people to another the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And this is what you're witnessing right now. The translations of kingdoms. The nations is about to go into third world's war. Right? 
And before you build a kingdom, you got to destroy the old kingdom. Before you build an empire, you have to destroy the old empire. And this is why this old, pi old empire is at its end. Because the empire of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we are the, the last signs of the last times of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The prophets, the messages, just like in 300, before the king came, he sent his messenger, which is a parable in the Bible, by the way. He sent his messengers to let him know that the king is on his way. Get right. Pay your taxes. Pay your offering. Do what you got to do because the king is coming. Make sure shit is right when the, your highness comes. And we're telling you the exact same thing. Our Lord and Savior is coming. Our king is coming. And he ain't coming for peace. He's coming for war because you have his people in bondage still. 2023. I don't give a damn you got a constitution and give us the freedom of speech. I don't care. You pay us wages. I don't care if you uh, give us uh, passes to travel to earth. <clears throat> I don't care about any of that. We still in slavery. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the heavenly father to pay back those that troubled you. Who was the ones that troubled us? No other than the Caucasian race. And even two thirds of our people. So the Lord is going to pay back everybody that trouble his servants. Go ahead. Isaiah 14, 21. It says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. And they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the word of cities. So once again, are we interpreting that? Well, that's verbatim. Exactly what it says. And you mad at us. You, and you mad at us because we telling you what the word of the Lord says. And that's even in the scriptures. You'll get mad at hearing the words of the Lord. You don't care what God has to say. But you won't learn one way or the other, what God has to say. Got it. It says, For I will rise up against them, said the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, and remnant, and son, and nephew, said the Lord. So the Lord is going to cut Babylon off. And Babylon is America in the Bible. So the Lord will cut this place off. For all the wickedness that goes on every single day in this God forsaken kingdom. This fucking cesspool of wickedness, man. Go ahead. That was a my dollar. I told you this is a This is a Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Yeah. It says, Keep thy foot. When thou goest to the house of the Most High. So the scriptures say, keep thy foot, meaning it is slang or figurative speech, meaning put your foot in your mouth. Hold your peace. Right? When you come to the house of the Lord, this is the house of the Lord. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of us. So right now, this is the congregation or the house of the Lord. Please, Lord. Shalom. Okay. And be more ready to hear 
than to give the sacrifice of food. And that's exactly what he was doing, man. He was giving the sacrifices of fools. There you go. He was giving the sacrifices of fools, man. Nothing he was speaking was sad. Nothing he was speaking was according to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. He was speaking what he felt. And we know what the scriptures talk about when it concerns your heart. It is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know? So we don't go based off of what we feel. We go based off of thus saith the Lord, and as it is written. It says, for they consider not that they do evil. They don't consider that they do it evil, man. That's why when you come up to the house of the Lord, you ain't supposed to be babbling, man. Really, you're supposed to be listening more than speaking. Because I just read it earlier in Ephesians 5 and 17. Be not unwise, but know what the will of the Lord is. You don't know what the will of the Lord is. We out here to tell you what the will of the Lord is. You don't have a clue about the Lord. That's why a guy, whatever portal that guy came from, the color of the Lord or whatever, probably Satan himself, the little man in the suit, right? What color was Christ or whatever? You don't know what the Lord looks like. You don't know what the Lord likes. You don't know what the Lord dislikes. You don't know what the Lord is going to do on earth. You don't know anything. So shut your damn mouth, man. And listen. But that's the problem of an average American, man. They think they know everything. Shut up. It's Rock 5 and uh, 11. Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere. Be swift to hear. Listen. In the words of the elder, God gave you two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to be doing more listening than talking. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to be doing more listening, more intaking than outputting. Go ahead. Be swift to hear. They say be swift to speak. And let thy life be sincere. And let your life be sincere, man mean being genuine right and what are you supposed to be sincere towards the will of the Lord the words of the Lord not sincere towards your feelings because we could feel a million things but that don't mean your feelings are correct everybody feels something but you got to have discipline you got to be rational you got to be logical peace. And you got to know what the Lord says. That's what matters. Over, what the Lord says override what we feel. Look what feeling got us. Look what feelings got us. Look at this place, man. This place is a dump, man. It's a goddamn Twilight Zone. Black, it's an episode of Black Mirror. That's where we live in. And you people are okay with it. You were okay with living in Black Mirror. Uh, and let thy light be sincere and with patience give answer. And patience give answer, man. Right? Meaning, think before you speak. Don't just react, don't be impulsive. As that demon was earlier, man. Had no type of self-control, no type of discipline. It's not a man. That wasn't a man. That was Satan. That was a demon, man. And how do you deal with Satan? How you deal with demons? The scriptures. You don't do too much conversing. You deal with them in the scriptures. Because they can't deal with the scriptures. Good can't deal with, uh, evil can't deal with good. Darkness can't deal with light. What happens when you cut the light on in the dark? It disappears. Immediately. 
moment you cut on the light, all darkness vanquished. The light is this word. So right now, you are seeing the light bearers. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For he to have it here, let him hear. Apostle Sahar would say it. He wouldn't give a fuck. a fairy. He wouldn't give a fuck. But I ain't gonna go that far. We got new believers. It's but so much, you know. Strong meat is for them of full age. We gotta give brothers the milk. <laughs> yeah, Lumen, Lumen, I yeah, yeah. so all that. Got it. Yeah, say it. Bring it out. Yeah, say it. it. Makes sense. You got, you got, you got um, the illuminated on the left hand side and illuminated on the right hand side. All right. Even the Lord is considered as a um, a morning star, and Lucifer is considered as a being of light also. Uh, uh, you know, Lucifer means light bearer. All right. That's it. And that's scripture. That brother. Lucifer's in order. He's more in order than you make it The brothers can say it better than I can. But nah, you I just, understand. you eloquently put it correct. I I couldn't word it or phrase it at the, phrase it at the moment. You edit, eloquently put it in right terminology. Go ahead, I, uh, And whoever want to speak next after this. This is uh, Proverbs. Chapter 29, verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. And who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. That's why he said, where's that hate? Give me that hate. All right? And we wasn't talking, we was talking about everlasting life. We was talking about keeping the commandments. Nothing about hate. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not worship other gods. What about that is hate? That's life. Those things are life. The scriptures say, if you meditate on that, you'll have a prosperous and successful life. You'll live a bit, you'll live a bit longer, man. If it's the will of the Lord, man. You'll live a bit longer if you keep those commandments. If you don't murder nobody. Then nobody might not murder you. You might not go to jail and get murdered then. Don't steal from nobody. You might not get murdered for stealing or go to jail and get murdered. <laughs> the list goes on. There's a thousand ways to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choose one. Choose one. <laughs> and that's what they do. They choose all of them. They choose all of them. Right? So, yeah, the, the Lord gave us these laws, statutes, commandments. To live by so we can have life. But people go away from that, and this is why you have death. This is why you have sin. Because you go away from God's word. Alright? That was it? Yeah. Whoever wanna step up next. I'ma step down, pass it to the next speaker. In the spirit of power, y'all by some y'all show. Thank you. Proverbs 121. Keep it going through the spirit. You know? This is uh, Proverbs. Is 21? 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. It says, wisdom cries it out. She uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse. Yeah, wisdom is crying out, you know, like it is right now. Wisdom is crying out how? Through the, through the men out there on the highways and byways. All right? right? What wisdom? The wisdom of the Bible. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered her voice, I mean, she uttered her words saying, how long, ye simple ones, ye, will ye love simplicity? Yeah, the opening of the gates. All right, being the midst of the people. People going about their business, do whatever they want to do. So here we are, in the opening of the gates 
All right, uttering our, uttering our voice, the voice of Yahweh Shimi Yahweh Shai, written up by our people. At the sign right here, okay, dealing with the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Right? So you utter, the voice, the word is coming out in the, tr in, the, in the streets. How long will you love simplicity? Will you love being simple? Love being comedians? See, the things of the world, are, of the world, things of simplicity. But now you gotta deal with the truth. All right? And the truth hurts. You know, some people don't want to deal with that. That's why you got Jake that don't watch the news. Or oh, I can't watch the news. It's, it's too much. I'm already going through shit. But that's the reality of things. It's only gonna get worse. So you gotta get the truth. Going back into the scriptures, go back into the, the uh the history. All right, back to the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Right? Yeah, come on. This is um Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression. That's and right, I man. The, the Lord has shown his people their transgressions. All right, cry aloud, spare not. You're not sparing feelings, you're not sparing um, relationships. It don't really matter, man. The word comes out above all those things. Because what the scriptures say, <laughs> what the scriptures say, uh, Obey, obey the Most High, right? Or fear the Lord rather than fear men, right? Indeed. And the house of Jacob their sins. And the house of Jacob their sins. Jacob being the progenitor of the uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Israelites, according to the Bible. And you sinning, man, right? Because the the uh, the the, uh, the, sin, the, uh, the laws that commandments was given on to you. And how do you sin? By transgressing the laws. All right, you probably get that real quick. Uh, you get, I uh, get what you get. Uh, it says, "How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity?" Yeah, how long, man? Here it is at the end of this thing. All right, you got wars popping off, which is prophecies. You have pestilence, which is prophecies. It says it's gonna get worse. They got all types of, uh, um you know, medical plans or whatever. But it's all really a, a setup to destroy you. But you got Jake that, that loves simplicity, you're gonna fall right into Esau's trap. Right? But what else is going on, man? All right, you see the chariots? They don't really, the chariot, they don't really talk about it not that much as they used to, as they was like a month or two ago. But the chariots are making their appearances, man. And they're gonna, they're gonna visit this place by way of destruction. Right. Yeah, right now they got the whole uh, brain implant thing going on. You know what I'm saying? The neural link. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. that right there. We're close, man. Mm -hmm. We're close for this for this uh, prophecy. You know, to really come to pass, man. And which one of the guys out there, you know, that call yourself uh, prophets, you're gonna be found out to be uh, false prophets, man. All right, deceiving the people, man. You know what you gonna say then? All right, because the men of Great Millstone, starting with our apostles, elders, brothers going down, you know, we've been saying this for the longest, man, that it's the, the MOTB is to see him, man. All right? It's to see him, and it, it's going to be to see him. And look, the technology is out there, you know what I'm saying? It's no it's no denying it. Yeah. All right? So that, that right there, you know, that's one of the major prophecies. When that come to pass, then you know World War Three is up next, all right? The right. missiles yeah. are gonna fly. Right. So yeah, that's right, man. That's one of the major prophecies. And that's gonna be implemented, man. We've been telling you this, going back to our, our apostles, right? Of GMS, of course, we've been telling you, because everybody's apostle now. We've been telling you that this trip is gonna be implemented and now it's happening, man. So that's a beautiful thing. Now they got it so you could talk on your, talk on your, uh, on your phone with your hand. You know, I saw the, the brother uh, Lamadia put, put out a lesson on that. It says, and the, it says, and the scorn is delight in their scorning. The scorn is delight in their scorning, man. Like the dude that took earlier. Basically scorning. He didn't really want no knowledge, man. Nope. 
he was a scorner. Yeah. But that's a beautiful thing because those things have to happen. And we're going to see the looks on you guys' faces, man. All right? Even our own people, scorning. If you ain't paying in person, then you scorning on your keypad. All right, keyboard warriors. And fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. Right? How you hate knowledge? You hate the prophets. It's how you getting the knowledge? You have to be taught. You know, but fools hate knowledge. Now the elect, they're gonna gravitate towards the the, uh, the prophets, towards learning. All right, they're gonna have that understanding. You know. But as far as the fools go. A lot of our people are too dirty, so for Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, going to be destroyed right along with America, aka Babylon. Right? Let's see that. Um, this is Amos chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, all right, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, the saying. Lord, the Lord is directing, directly speaking to Israel. All right, which we've been scattered abroad, man. In today's time, we've been scattered abroad. So we might, we might look like a foreign nation or whatnot, but the Lord is dealing with Israel. Now, if you hear this word, and you gravitate towards this word and you actually go out there and believe in this thing and have faith, then most likely you an Israelite. All right? And and most likely you part of the elect. Because the only elect is going to do that. Go on. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Right. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. The Lord said he only, he only knew you, Israel, no other nation. Meaning what? He only gave his name onto Israel. He gave his his word onto and Israel. His Lord and his his on name is onto Israel. Right? And so he said, What? He's gonna punish you. Because you broke the laws, statutes, and commandments. Like like this guy right now is getting punished, man. You alright? The Lord said, give me uh scripture said, give me uh probably no riches. You know, because if you're in poverty, then you won't, then you, you steal, and you won't be able to do the works. All right, so the Lord ain't done with that guy. You know, and that's 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 judgment for me. How about Shimei This is uh, the Book of Psalms, chapter one forty-seven, verse nineteen. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Mm -hmm. He have not dealt so with any nation. So the Lord is not dealing with these nations, man. So when you see these heathens picking up the Bible, talking about, oh, now I'm saved. No, it ain't dealing with you. That's right. It ain't dealing with two-thirds of Israel. You so for Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Right? It's only dealing with, with, the, with the elect. Right? Oh, tell me what you got. Uh, it says, he have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. As for his judgments, they have not known them. So the whole book is for Israel, man. And not one point, all these heathens are going to be saved. And not one point, they're going to, they're going to be uh, given with knowledge and understanding. Well, you can be given the understanding to understand you're going to be destroyed. Right? But as far as salvation, it's out of the picture. You go, somebody got to be in captivity. Somebody got to build the kingdom. Right. Matthew 1 and 21 It reads And she shall bring forth a son And thou shalt call his name Yahweh For he shall save his people From their sins That's right The Lord shall save his people So when the Lord came on the scene He came on a mission Alright He didn't come to deal with these heathens He came to save his people And he followed that out to the point okay and it's the same thing today we out here speaking we really only speaking and warning the people we warning who israel mm -hmm. hey what proves that when the uh when uh the woman at the well basically he shut it down he said uh she was like oh you know that our forefathers 
worship that as well. You know, talking about Abraham, but the Lord said, you know, you ain't gonna, you know, you don't know who, you don't know what you worship, right? Because you know, salvation is, is of the Jews, man. All right. So he shut it down, man. He wasn't Why would he say that? Why would he identify specifically? Saying the salvation is of you, if she was an actual Jew or uh, a descendant of the Israelites or the Jews, but she wasn't. She was one of those implants that was put in there, all right? The, yeah, by by uh, Shalmaneser that went up in one of those converts, one of those uh, Amites, all right? I think they were Christians. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that was impersonating Israelites and also. You know what I'm saying? The, the Lord had uh, lions, you know, attacking the bar of their asses. Right. And that's why they had to have a priest. They had to take a priest and, you know, have to have them implement the law so the lions, you know, stopped attacking their asses. Because they wasn't, they, that's where she came from. Yeah. Samaritans. Hey, hey, that, that's why today you, you got these people in the, uh, in the Middle East, so-called following certain laws. And you might say, oh, damn, see these heathens, they're a little better than Esau. At least they're doing a little something. They really got that from Israel, man. Yeah. Huh. Matthew 10, verse 5. These 12, Yahweh Shah sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into any way of the Gentiles. Yeah, don't deal with the Gentiles. Don't wake the Gentiles up. Don't bring my law text commandments onto the Gentiles. Don't don't preach me onto the Gentiles, right? <laughs> Go not. That's exactly what he said. Yep. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Yeah, don't give them my name. Don't, all right, this is my name, Yahusha. I'm here. I'm, I'm here for the nation of Israel. That's only for Israelite. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. These different nations, right? Into and into any city of the Samaritans, mm -hmm. into ye not. Right, like like Ella just broke down. The Samaritans, the uh, the, uh, the Israelites in Samaria, Samaria been been uh took into captivity at that point. Okay? And and it been taken over by heathens. Right. The house, the house of Israel, which consists of the northern kingdom, That's right. they was um, exiled out of the land. Matter of fact, Samaria, I believe that's where Ephraim dwelt. Right. And you Ephraim, know, that's right. Ephraim is the head, the head tribe yeah, of the, uh, the northern kingdom. It was over here on this side. Everybody, everybody was figuring where the, where the uh, northern tribe was at. It was over here, dwelling on this side of the earth. And you got, you know, you got history on that, you know? So it says, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. And that's what that woman was, a Samaritan. She was one of the women that, he, that the, the scripture was talking about. In uh, John the fourth chapter, right? You know, I'm sorry, history, right? History, right? So, so what is this that you know the world is talking about? God loves everybody, and God gave His Son for everybody. Right. When the Son of God just said this, right? Go not into any way of the Gentile. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather, but go rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And just, just like, just like back then in the ancient times, you had Jake that was going off following different customs. It's the same thing today. We got Jake Paul and different customs. The big thing now is Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, Thanksgiving. But that don't go back to the to the Israelite customs. That that ain't, that ain't part of our high holy days. That go back to Esau. And what he did to the Native Americans, which the Native Americans are Israelites, man. Gadites from the Northern Kingdom. This is uh, the book of Acts, chapter five. Let me start at verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. 
or to obey the most high rather than men. Because you leave it to men, you be out here work, trying trying to convert Esau. Right. Yes. Leave it to men, you be out here trying to convert him. Right. He ain't come here to fucking plate this mouth. Uh, and we gonna tell him, yo, him, you were this shit like. You know? <laughs> And that's completely off. Well, yeah, yeah. He, why he got a frisbee in his mouth? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's completely off, man. He lost the script to say what? So rather, we do one time. It says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So we obey Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? Because while we're fearing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, if you disobey him, he's going to punish you. He can put you to death or worse. Okay. Reads on, it says, The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Right, and right. It's like it. Now, that statement right there is heavy. Because you're going to have Israelites that's not going to believe in that. All right, but then you're going to have Jake that's going to wake up they're going to shake off the, the hedonistic ways and they're going to believe in Yahweh while Yahweh is shot. It says, but to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Right, the elect of Israel. Because like I said, you got to have Israel that's not going to believe in that. Like today, you tell, you tell, uh, uh, you tell Judah, you know, the so-called uh, Negroes, yo, you want uh, the Lord of the dark-skinned man. You don't want you to get crazy. All right, because they ain't gonna believe in it. They have to be part of the elect. You know, they have to give them that understanding. So two thirds gonna be destroyed for this for non-belief, right? But the elect that believe in this word and have faith, they're gonna be delivered by way of their actions. This is Matthew chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four. But he answered and said, "I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel." There you go. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's that's why you had Jacob. That's why you had the, the, uh, the apostles of God be going abroad, man. Because they were going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, just like today, man. The internet do all the heavy lifting. We'll be going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You might have a Jake that look like an Edomite. But if they believe, if they have faith, they're doing the works. And then this like, okay, through faith, we gonna know when we gonna, we gonna ultimately we gonna know when it's, uh, it's time for salvation and destruction, right? But if you're doing the works, the most likely you and this like, man. And that's saying to test your faith. Y'all doing that? Yeah, man. Okay, so I got, uh, I got something. Okay, this is Saint John, chapter oh. eleven. 11 St. John chapter 11 verse 49 and one of them named Caiaphas a devil mm -hmm. a, 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 a black devil being a high priest that same year said unto them ye know nothing at all nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and, and that the whole nation should perish not. Basically, it's better that Yahweh Shah died than that all of us die. Because if Israel worships Yahweh Shah, the Romans are going to kill all of us. Right? So he said it's better that he dies than we die. Not even knowing he was fulfilling prophecy by saying this. But he was coming on a wicked perspective. Like, it says, and this make he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahweh Shah should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. There you go. There you go. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Children of God that was scattered abroad, children of Yahweh, while Yahweh shot the Israelites. Okay? We, we, hey, we, we're able to stand in the sea. You can't first be in one place. Right? So, and we were, and mainly we were uh, 
we wouldn't be on a boat. We, we were sent, we were spread abroad by way of slavery, captivity. It was actually a curse. We read uh, Deuteronomy 28, chapter verse 64. It goes into that. You know, how we were scattered among the other nations to the point we even don't look like the other nations. You know? This is uh, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the, of the living of the Most High. Right, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. So it's not a thing of outward appearance. Oh, you dark skin, oh, you light skin, oh, your eyes are a little chinky. All right, it ain't about that. The, the texture you hear, it's about your spirit. Okay, if you believe in the, the, uh, the names, all right, or are you willing to sacrifice your life? Uh, for for Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, mm -hmm. you know, and that's enough. Okay, that's enough. The only, only person that can condemn you is yourself. If you fall out, give up the faith. All right, turn back your head from the plow. Then you condemn. But as far as going out there and doing the work, we can't say who you are, who you ain't. That's the you and Yahweh Shah. It says, and the children and heirs, the heirs of the Most High, and if children then is, meaning we are being, uh, we are being, if children then is, meaning we will be, uh, slot you, you'll be like, you know, your rulership if you have a shot, right? So if you heir to the throne, that means after the king, then, then you also a rulership. So if they say long live the, uh, if the king dies, they'll say, long, the king is dead, long live the king. Meaning the son will be uh, in, in rulership right after that. But Yahweh Shah said he's going to share his rulership with the nation of Israel, with the elect. Start with the elect. All right? All the Israel is going to be in the kingdom. But start with the, with the elect on this side, the ones who are doing the works on the Howards and Bowers. It's say, and joint is with Yahweh Shah. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Are you willing to suffer? Okay, that's the that's the thing. Are you willing to die for for the, the belief in Yahweh Shah? Are you willing to go through poverty? All right. Are you willing to embrace the curses? You know, because you got Jake that's just the one to embrace the curses. Right. That's why you got Jake that becomes celebrities and you know uh, the best boxes. Like my Tyson said, the best boxes are broke. They come from nothing. But they want to escape the curses. We be here to embrace the curses. Why could you understand? This is something you gotta know. So terrain with your Howard Shah. I got a quick preset. This, this is Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee, Zebedee's children with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the, on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Yahweh Shai answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. So, so basically, you know, the mother of, of the sons of Zebedee, they would ask him, you know, which, you know, uh, this, the two sons could be on the right right hand of Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah said it's not up to him, it's up to the father to. You know, uh, uh, to, to put him in that position. But the point is that he said that they were indeed drink of the cup. You know, the scripture says that his servant is not greater than his master. All right? So, the same way how the house Shai got persecuted, you know, his servants are going to go through the same, the same thing. We also going to drink of that cup, man. All right? That's why you got guys, they don't really understand what they're truly involved with, man. All right? Things are going to get bad. But you got to have that mindset to know that you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to go through uh, great tribulation. 
That's how you want to enter into the, uh, the kingdom. All right, going through that straight gate, that straight and narrow, man. You know? Yeah. All right. Hey. So, you got it. Oh, well, is edifying. You want to say all praise and honor and glory goes to the house of Bashir. 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 Bashir.